Hi everyone, thank you for watching. I'm here with president of Book Baby, Jim Foley, and we're gonna talk about something that a lot of self-published authors will, will call our publishing specialist to talk about, and that is how you could sell your self-published book in local bookstores. So Jim, thank you for taking the time to be here, and this is a fun thing to talk about. Very exciting, thanks for having me. You bet. So let's kind of, you know, I don't wanna dance around it, I wanna get right into it. I What do you think, for a, let's say for a first time self-published author um, doing this for the first time, what is the first thing they should be thinking about? First thing they should be doing if their goal is to end up in local bookstores? Well, the first thing <clears throat> is of course the quality of the book, right? It's gotta be professionally uh, self-published like what we produce at Book Baby. What does that mean? Professionally designed, professionally formatted, professionally edited. And uh, that's really table stakes to be taken serious in any aspect of publishing, but times 10 uh, for, for bookstores, especially independent bookstores. Yeah, I agree completely. You know, when we've spoken about this before and I speak about it all the time, just the importance of a truly professional publish and having a legitimately professionally designed cover and how important that is. But when it comes to bookstores, it means so much because you have to remember that these bookstores are strictly in the business of selling books and a bad cover or mostly just an amateur cover is just has no chance of even being looked at on the shelves. So you have to put your book in a position to succeed and just you can't, you can't survive with a, a poorly designed cover without editing. It's just it's not gonna have a chance. So um, I agree. And I think with that, um, so obviously the book has to look great. It has to be professionally done, but what are the practical steps they should be doing? Like, let's say they have a, a professionally designed book. It's been edited, it's been formatted, it looks great. Um, what are the practical steps an author should be taking after that? Well, it really depends on who the author is and you know if they're, if they're a, an author who has a reputation and fans and demand for the book nationally, regionally, locally, all these things matter. It looks a little different if you're a first time author and you have none of those things, right? It's going to be hard for you to make a case to a bookstore to, to put the book um, on the pub date on their shelves and wish for sales, right? So they're a business and um, they want to hear about why the book is going to sell in their store. And, you know, you have to understand what the bookstores are about, right? So there's the big box stores like Barnes and Noble or Books a Million. And then there's like the mid-level big regional stores like Pals Books or others. And then there's the independent uh, storefront, little bookstores, independent bookstores. You know, there's like 1,500 of them these days around the country. And those businesses, in a lot of cases, are they're a labor of love, right? The operator of the store is working all day, running the business themselves. They have a few people working in the store. They love books. They're, they're maybe a writer themselves. And they have uh, writing groups at the bookstores, and it's a community. And for them, too, they have limited amounts of money to invest in inventory to put on the shelves. Because every book on the shelf represents real dollars. Right. in inventory it's an asset that's invested in and on that shelf and they have to turn that over and turn it into a profit so they can keep the business going so um and they don't have a lot of bandwidth to review offers to pitches to sell the book right so we at book baby talk to bookstores all the time and a lot of feedback we get from the bookstore owners is i'm overwhelmed with requests to sell my book from strangers and they say Jim, would you imagine the audacity? All these people just come in, never spent a dollar in my store, never bought a book in my store, don't participate in any of the community events we do. And, but they're very demanding. They really want me to sell their book. And I have to say no. And I try to do it politely, but you know, it's, 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 and it's distraction for them. So you really want to have, I think the first thing is have, have a realistic, understanding of the marketplace who the target stores are and and a real compelling case about why they should carry your book yeah and i think that's 
that's a really great point because bookstores aren't just going to take a risk on a stranger's book, especially if that stranger hasn't shown any interest in their personal business. So in my mind too, even before your book is published, even while you're writing or before you're writing, like you need to form a genuine personal re relationship with that bookstore and show your support to them before they show your support to you. And um, start this process early, purchase books from their store. You know, you should be supporting their business events and their um, their community and refer friends and family to shop there. Just if you show a genuine interest in the people running the bookstore and, and demonstrate that you care, I think you have a lot better chance, obviously, in addition to having a, a book that looks good and reads well. But just the personal relationship side, I think, gets forgotten a lot, especially because authors are oftentimes so fixated on their work. But it's really important um, because even, even for traditionally published authors from smaller publishing houses, it's no guarantee to make, make it in bookstores. Um, it's, it's one of the biggest challenges an author has to overcome. And it's just building a relationship is really the biggest first step in my mind as well. Critical. Yeah. And it's a great community to be a part of, right? And especially locally. I think every author locally should support their, their independent bookstores. And even the Barnes & Noble store, you know, be in there. Introduce yourself to the people who work there. Uh, they have events. Um, you can do a lot of things, too. You could even offer to make a special deal with a bookstore. Like, I'm going to give you 10 books for free just to get interest. You sell them, you keep 100% of the profits. You don't have to make any investment in my book and uh, put a little postcard in each book that yeah. says, if you enjoy this book, give it to a friend, something like that, you know, to start start building interest locally. And a nice little note, you know, hey, I'm Jim Foley. I'm a local Philadelphia author. I really appreciate you reading my book. I'd love to help, you know, I'd love your help building my brand locally. If you love my book, please give it to a friend and pass it along. You know, that kind of thing really starts to build traction. No, it's true. And I think that authors should keep in mind that if they want, when it comes to their earnings and the royalties they're making at the beginning of their journey, most of it is not going to come from brick and mortar sales. It's that, that is being in stores is a great way to, get your face out in the community, connect with new readers, but people sometimes have the wrong idea about that being the path to profitability. And it's not quite the case. It's really just a, a great way to really insert yourself into the community. And that's why it's so important to remain local, especially that's why local bookstores are such an awesome resource and should every author and every reader should be connecting with the people who run those businesses. Absolutely. And from a pure business perspective, uh, another surefire way to get yourself stocked in, lo in in national bookstores is to have the receipts to prove that your book's selling and there's demand. So what I mean by that is get traction online first, you know, sell loads of ebooks, sell loads of print on demand books on the big online stores. And then when you, when that happens, you, you have credibility, you can take that into a store, talk to the book buyers, the store managers and say, look, I'm working hard. I'm marketing my book. It's it's hitting. People really love it. Look at all the reviews I'm getting. I'm selling. I think I can sell in your outlet because of this. Yeah. And uh, that's the kind of pitch you can make. No, it's true because, you know, you could have a great relationship with that store, but the store still wants to have a good amount of confidence that people are going to buy the book. <laughs> um, they Relationships can only take you so far. And there are a bunch of ways that you can instill confidence in a bookstore to make them believe that your book is going to sell. And one of those is like, you know, show me the receipts. Uh, yeah. But, you know, another one is, um, I think by showing that you have a genuine following within the community that shops there, um, because, you know, readers are a tight knit bunch. They love to support their, their peers, their, their friends. And I think that if you show that, um, you know, you're active at events, at readings, and you have a relationship with the readers who shop there, there's a good chance that those people are going to be excited to support you and, and buy your book. Um, and I think that's, you do want to show that as well, that you're engaged with the people who are shopping at that store to the 
um, you know, those business owners, whether it be Barnes and Noble or like a, a smaller business. Absolutely. Um, I do you have any other um, final thoughts on how an independent author can leverage personal relationships to sell their books to bookstores? Well, um, <clears throat> you can do events locally too. So book signings are a great thing. Um, you can have uh, launch parties in bookstores in the evening hours on a Friday night. That could be really exciting. Um, you can you, you can leverage your local network too. And not only can you you know um, tell them that your book's available, you you can say you know I have this local network that I'm going to try to bring my audience into your stores as new buyers as well. And that that helps. Yeah, I think doing events is so so critical, especially now that. There's a there's an appetite for events now that we're in this post pandemic society. It's really amongst all communities. It's really come out in full force, and I think that people really really enjoy getting out and smoke, supporting local creators. And this isn't just a book thing. Um, it's in regards to every industry. But there's gonna be there's gonna be an appetite for it. Um, so let's now say that you did everything right. You have a killer book. You have relationships with the, the people who shop there, you have relationships with the bookstore managers, and they agree to get your book in the store. And now the bookstore, let's say they need um, 50 copies. How does that process work for a self-published author? And then we should talk about how that process would work if you're a book baby author. Mm -hmm. Well, it depends. So there's two, there's two main ways. Number one, you could sell on consignment, right? So that means you have your personal inventory. You make a deal with the bookstore to sell on consignment. That means they have the 50 books there. They're, when they sell, you make a deal about when you collect the payment. They don't have to pay up front. That's really good because it's really low risk um, for the bookstores. So that's, I would say that's probably the most preferred option. Number two, of course, is through wholesale networks. So every bookstore buys books from wholesalers. And um, if you're a book baby author, your book is available in all of the wholesalers uh, catalogs. We, we offer your book through the independent publishers group. We offer it through Ingram. We offer it through Gardner's, you name it. Our books are in, uh, in all the big wholesalers catalogs. And what that means is they're available for sale to the bookstores. Okay. Yeah, I know that that is always the the one thought that comes out. There's my like, I don't know how it actually works. So, yeah. um, and I think it's important to know that when you work with a self publishing company like Book Baby, it's it's incredibly easy. You have all the tools at your disposal and the people in your corner to help you do it. Yeah, yeah, it's really great. The, and the main difference with Book Baby is that, and this is unique, is that the books are returnable in our network. Um, so the, the books have to have that. Uh, status or the bookstores won't buy them um you know so that's a big deal and at book baby when the books get returned um we never go back to the author and try to recoup money we just manage it we put the books in our warehouse and the next order we use the inventory to fulfill the orders um we do things like that and we have really good relationships and well-managed relationships with the wholesalers that uh, put us in a position to be able to to, to support returns yeah, you know, it's not the um, the focus point of this conversation. It's probably worth it's an it's probably worth an entire video on its own. But totally, returns in general are a huge, huge factor for independent authors that could be a serious a serious issue. Um, that you know, book baby authors don't have to worry about that. But I've you know, just over the last couple of years, there have been horror stories of authors being on the hook for thousands of dollars in book returns and being in the hole two or three K just because, um, you know, a bunch of copies of the books were ordered and then returned. And then they had a, they were responsible for paying that back. So not really the whole thing today, but um, it's a big, it's a big thing to consider um, that a lot of authors, especially who are so focused on their writing and on their work that they don't realize until they get hit with that, brutal that brutal news that they're they're on the hook for a couple thousand dollars yeah it's very uh very disappointing that that happens but not a book baby 
So that's good news for, for anybody who's a book baby author or aspiring book baby author, but we shouldn't go down the rabbit hole about book returns on this video, but we should do another video about, uh, about returns specifically. But there is great information on the book baby blog today that a person could uh, go read in the meantime. Yeah, no, stay tuned on that. Um, back to the normal, what we're talking about today. And I think uh, there's a couple other items that authors should be aware of if they want to have the best chance of selling in a bookstore. I'm going to, I'm curious if any come to your mind, but to me, I, I think about pricing is really important. You really do want to make sure that your books are priced appropriately. And I know that especially for first time authors, it could be challenging. And my advice for that is just to do market research, look at books that are sold within your genre, similar books, see what they're pricing for, look at the formats, but do research on little things like pricing because it, it does matter. Definitely. And you don't, you know, we're not, I'm not suggesting anybody has to discount. In fact, a lot of times I think authors tend to undervalue their work um, and it's too, too far out of line with what the market value for that type of book is. As you mentioned, that's a whole, we could do a whole nother video on pricing strategy for books someday. We should put that on the list. But pricing is definitely an important component of book selling should be considered uh, as such. And, you know, one other, you know, point that a, uh, one of our team members here brought up was that a lot of large stores like Barnes and Noble do focus on local authors. So you should really take notice of the bookstores that are prioritizing local authors because they should for the most part, be excited to, you know, share the local creators within their community. So that's something to be very mindful as well. Even if it's, if it's own, its own little shelf, um, Philadelphia yeah. author, whatever city you live in. Yeah. Our, our bookstore, we have people on our team who used to work for Barnes and Noble and understand perfectly how everything works. It's a really great <clears throat> knowledge. Uh, a lot of that goes on in the publishing industry. It's a very small world. Um, but uh, anyway, yeah, so the Barnes & Noble is great because they have the, uh, the local author sections in most stores. And, um, you know, you can, you can go and take a look and, and pay attention to the seasonality of that area of the bookstore because that's important too. And you could, you know, a lot of it might have to do with timing. Like, okay, what kind of books are selling this time of the year, this month? Maybe my book could belong there, you know? Um, and I think that that's something that, to take note of too and and you know if you have a book that's about some kind of subject or the story is seasonal you know you you want to you want to get in there early and make the pitch and make sure the book is uh purchased and available for sale during the time that you know will people will really have interest in in your book so looking at this like the big picture in your mind what is the true value of being in bookstores because you know for the most so many books are bought digitally today um that's just the way the industry is that's the way retail is going although i you know in-person shopping is still important but if you're an independent author what is the main reason you want to push this endeavor well i think it's for the whole brand building of of your author brand right so that's most important. And you want to have, like we talked about, a good relationship with the local bookstores. You want to walk in and they're like, hey, Jim, how are you doing today? Right. They want to know you and yeah. you want them to know you. And that's very important um, because that that grassroots word of mouth advertising for your book and your your author brand, that's how it happens. So there's that component of it. Um, and um, if it's hyper local, you should, you know, if the book's like, the history of Philadelphia baseball, whatever it may be. Um, you know, you absolutely want to target local bookstores. If there's a local feel, local vibe, regional vibe to the book, you, you absolutely want to try to target those stores and those buyers in that area. And then <clears throat> if you're fortunate enough to become a bestseller, bestseller and, you, and you have potential to, to be a bestseller on a national uh, stage and in those big box stores across the country, by all means, and, and congratulations, because I know a lot of work went into making that happen. And uh, that that's that's the that that's the top of the pyramid, and a very small percentage of of books get up there immediately. It takes a long time usually to build up to that kind of uh, situation for for most starting authors. You know, you're talking probably a few years, unless you have like an absolute moonshot of a bestseller out of the gate that everybody is just talking about like crazy, which happens, you know. 
but uh, yeah. that's not really the reality for for most people out of the gate. Yeah, and like out of the gate, as you're building your brand, I think it it speaks volumes if you could achieve that and have your book on on a bookshelf, and you could use that material in your own personal marketing, like. Go to the bookstore where your book is being sold and and highlight it. Be like, look, check it out. Like it it gives you an, an authority that um, speaks a lot because it says, you know, this this store believed enough in my work to invest in it. Like those each of those books is true money that they're investing in. You know, your story because they believe in it. So I think it it's really a, just a powerful way for an author to assert themselves as an authority figure in what they're writing and, you know, build the brand that they're, they're establishing. Absolutely. And I have a little story for a final point. I think it's appropriate. Um, you have to think about the resources you have as an author and a marketer and a business person, right. To, to invest. So a few years ago, my phone here, book baby rings one day. And, uh, it was an author who wanted to tell me how disappointed they were because they had the perfect marketing strategy. They compiled a list of over a thousand bookstores in the United States across the country. And this was a first time author who never wrote a book before. And their marketing plan was to call the store manager personally in every single one of those stores and pitch the book. And this person did this work for weeks and 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 got no interest in the book from the store managers to, to put the book in. And I said, well, why, why did you think that was going to work out? You know, that, that wasn't a great idea for all the reasons we talked about in this interview. So think about that, you know, that, that person's time would have been much better spent uh, focused on, on how to, you know, get people to the online stores to, to buy his, his book and to get uh, interest in, in his author brand and, join you know writers groups and all these things that, that you do so um don't a lot of people think like that bookstore shelves first that shouldn't be the first uh, first approach in your marketing strategy no i think that's a great point and although bookstores are important i think it's just one piece of a very large and complicated puzzle that uh you have to navigate as as an independent author and um, you know, I hope those who are, who are watching, just remember how important personal relationships are. If you, you want to add that piece to your, your uh, arsenal and start building your brand. So, Amen. All right, Jim. Well, I, uh, took enough of your time. Thank you so much. And, uh, we will be back in, uh, we'll be back in about a week to address another topic. So thank you everyone for watching. Take care. Take care, everyone. Thank you. Interested in more self-publishing content? Be sure to subscribe to our channel.